Hey guys, welcome to Bar Z. My name's Stan. And today we're going to uh, just do a quick repair on a uh, powder coating oven. And it's an electric powder coating oven with a heating module and we had a failure. Uh, so let's go out in the field and take a look at first impressions, open the box up, see what it's all about. And then all about getting it back here, getting it repaired and things to look for in uh, electric heating appliances and things like that, uh, especially big ones. So uh, it might be kind of fun. So let's, uh, let's get to it. Okay, when I got in here, every one of these lugs is loose. This whole row of nuts, I got at least two turns on each one of these all the way across. These are all loose, that's why the bar is so discolored. This one's loose, it's probably seized. You can see the extreme temperature there. Here's a section of bar. These three were all tight. These were, these three were all loose. You can see the discoloration there. So, the, uh, this was loose, loose. This one is badly burned. I'm going to try to get it apart without breaking it. I got penetrating oil on the threads right now. The, all these, all the way across, were loose. You can see the discoloration in that bar right here. And uh, that one... That center one, really seized. The one on the left, I don't know how tight that one is. Oh look, that one's still tight, no discoloration. This one's loose. Look at that bar, it's black. So anywhere the connections are tight, like these lugs and these nuts, a lot of these nuts were really, really loose. Literally, you can go in there with your hand and pull them off, so. Uh, you can see where that one's definitely arcing and making a bunch of heat. Okay, so we got a 60,000 watt heating coil here and all those coils in there and I said that right 60,000 watts that's 60 kW there's a heating module out of a powder coating oven uh, this thing came in for repair uh, it's not that old customer did not do his maintenance electrical maintenance is very important you can see the discoloration these are supposed to be copper these are all copper bars all these were loose you see these these down here stayed pretty tight, but over here the, uh, these last two were loose. You can see the discoloration in the bar. So electrical maintenance is pretty important uh, as far as connections. I mean, this is as found right there. That jumper that was the killer right there. That's what killed this uh, module. So it's in for repair. This one was uh, had some damage too. So this one's going to get repaired. Uh, the elements are actually in really good shape. And if you look at the nichrome elements, they haven't even oxidized yet. They're just a nice straw colored element. So the module's still good, it's just the connections outside were bad. So the moral of the story is do your electrical maintenance, be good to your equipment, and it'll be good to you. Gotta keep your terminals tight right there. It even says retighten all electrical connections after startup. Pretty important. Okay, pardon the handheld, but uh, this is what victory looks like. We got all the studs off of there, and all the copper jumpers. This was the worst one. You see, it's real black. That's mainly the porcelain where that bus was you know, welding itself on. There's like it's just like welding spatter on that piece of porcelain. Porcelain's not damaged, but uh, I'm gonna run a die down on that uh, on that stud and clean it up. That's the worst one out of all of them. All the others cleaned up really good. Over on the bench, <clears throat> that's what victory looks like too, right there. I'm gonna do that to get one of the nuts off. I didn't want to shear off one of those studs. So we had to get in there with a little carbide burr and cut that nut out. These didn't, some of these didn't want to come off. You can see the discoloration on that one. Had to get in there and cut out the side of it with a Dremel and relieve it and kind of relax it and let it open up. And uh, <clears throat> here's the, all the copper jumpers. These are all pretty good. You know, I'll run a piece of sandpaper over them and ready to go. This one is so pitted. Look at that. Let's see if we'll focus on that. That's right here is where it was over that terminal that you saw uh, where the porcelain had kind of <laughs> looked like welding spatter on it. Those little bits of copper that impaled itself into the uh, porcelain. 
So pretty interesting. This is going to get replaced, obviously. And uh, we got all the hardware off. There's another good. That's what they all should look like right there. That was the one good one. All the others were discolored from heat. Uh, we're going to do away with the integral washer. What they had on there, they had the, pretend that's a bus bar. They had a flat washer. Then they put an integral star washer on top of a flat washer. And then they just ran a regular nut down on top of that whole schmear, which I don't think that, I don't like that that idea. That doesn't bite into the uh, copper very well. You know, that's supposed to bite down in the copper, but you don't see any teeth marks on the copper. I'm switching it out to the uh, serrated type uh, flange nuts. So I'm going to be using these. These are all, everything's stainless. So we're going to be using these serrated nuts and doing away with the flat washers, the integral washer, and the little cheesy, these are the little thin half nuts. And we're going to be using these big, uh, see that's a more sizable unit. It's got some thickness to it. And it's got the integral washer and the serrations that are going to dig into the copper and make the connection. So I'm hoping that's going to cure this problem. I've done this in the past. And, uh, you know, after you leave a job site, no news is good news. So no callbacks. And uh, so far, it's, I've been successful with it. I'm um, just chasing all those studs with a just a little hex die. Uh, chase them down, clean them up, and get ready for all the new hardware to go on. But uh, I'm going to go ahead and pull these uh, bars out of here. You know, you guys are going to look at this and go, wow, look at all those connections. Well, you know what? It's not that hard. This terminal and this terminal are one element. Same here. Same here. Same here. Now, if you split that into three, so you got two, four, six. You got phase A right here. Phase B, right here, and phase C, right here. And they're all brought into a star. See, they're all, all these elements are all brought together right here. So we put a link here, phase A. Put a link here, phase B. Put a link here, phase C. So you got all three phases that hit here, and they all come together in the center. So this is kind of a combination circuit. These two, uh, ele or, yeah, these two elements here are in parallel with each other. Okay, so I thought I'd show you how those nuts are biting in there. I, I gronked on one, tightened it down, and then I took it back off to see the let you see how it how they were biting in. I'm going to show you the other copper ones um, that haven't gotten one of these nuts put on them yet. These have been cleaned, but as you can see, no ring, no types of bite marks or anything on them. So all they had on there was flat washers. I really think it was kind of dumb the way, the, with their arrangement with the uh, with an internal star washer. So what they'd do is they'd put a, a flat washer against the copper, and then they put the internal star washer on top of the flat washer, as so, and then put it run a nut down on top of that. So I thought that was pretty silly. Because all the bite is happening between the, the two washers. And you're not getting any bite down into the copper at all. So as you can see, those, those are the old bars that I just uh, ran some scotch bright over. So I don't. there's nothing there on any of those. So pretty interesting. Anyways, i got to make uh, one more bar to replace that roasty toasty. That fellow there. Get a profile on that. Gotten pretty thin. All right, so let's uh, let's make our one one bar, and uh, we're gonna actually uh, drill into the center of each one and drop this lug right in the center of each one. Boom. So and that'll give us a place to connect our wire. Right. Okay, well we got it all buttoned up, and you can see I bolted my lugs directly to the uh, those little jumper bus bars and I made us a new one for this one that was burned that was one that was burned so badly and I got rid of those barrel lugs if you remember we had I'm going to show you a good one that's got a, th a 1032 threaded hole in the bottom and then it's got a set screw over on the side and what you're supposed to do with them you're supposed to just screw them onto the stud and then tighten that set screw and what it does is it tightens the set screw into the threads 
of the stud, so it makes it nearly impossible to get off. So, never been a fan of these barrel type uh, connectors. They do always come loose. Then you have failures like this. You so had to get in there with a die grinder and cut that one out. So, pretty ugly. Another one of my best friends was a good old nut splitter. They used a nut splitter to split those things. That worked pretty good. Anyways, we've got like a bolt-on type lug, standard. Uh, you know, for anyone that's going to ask, these are 70 amp lugs. And they're bolted on with uh, stainless steel hardware to the center of each uh, bus jumper. All right. So this module's uh, ready to, uh, I'm going to check it for ohms. Uh, I couldn't get a good check before because all the terminals were so corroded and so dirty and my readings were jumping around and I couldn't get in a good ohm reading. So uh, let me set up the tripod. It, this might be interesting. We can uh, do a quick ohms check on this thing. Okay, we're going to look at this together. This is the first time I've done this on this module. So uh, I'm set for ohms because resistance is futile. I'm going to do everything uh, to the center of the star. So I'm, gonna, I'm on this bus bar right here. So I'm going to go to the center of the star. 7.9. That was phase A to center. 7.9. Phase B to center. 7.8. And that's, uh, that's from phase A, B, and C, center of star. Now we're going to go phase to phase and we should see pretty much double that. 15.5. That was uh, B and C, 15.5, that's A and C, and then 15.5, A, A to B. All right, now let's check the other array. Put this over here where you can see it. Again, we're going to go uh, center a star. And actually, I think it might be fun if we go over on the board and draw it. Uh, I'll, I'll draw this configuration so you can see how these heating elements are laid out. Okay, so we're going to go center a star here. To phase A, 7.9. Phase B, center star, 7.9, 7.8, jumping. Phase C, 7.9, center star. So they're getting real nice readings. Now we'll go phase to phase. 15.5, that's uh, B to C. A to C, 15.5. A to B, 15.5. All our elements are good. We're getting solid readings. Nothing like what uh, was going on, you know, when I had these crummy connections. I had, uh, if you can imagine what kind of connection you're getting with this little fella right here. It's just, honestly, it's just easier to pull the thing out. It's on a quick change slide out rack. Get it out of there and, uh, you know, uh, get it on the bench and get it fixed up. So... We're all good. It's ready to reinstall. Let's do one last thing. We'll go over to the board and we'll draw how these things are wired. Uh, when, when I say they're wired in a star or a Y as opposed to a delta, I'll uh, maybe, maybe we'll do a drawing both ways and let you see how heating elements can be arranged with three phase. Okay. Welcome to the whiteboard. All right. First of all, uh, let's, we're going to draw it in a star or a Y pattern. And we're going to, I'll just start at the top, phase A, over here is going to be phase B, is that in frame? Yes. And over here is phase C. Now we, remember I told you we had, uh, it was a combination circuit. So we've got multiple heating elements on each phase. So right here at B, we come across, and we've got a heating element right here. And another heating element running in parallel right here. Connected back together in the center. Phase A, same thing. Phase C, same thing. Okay. So that's the way that heating uh, module is wired. There's two of these arrays. This is considered an array. So you put phase A, B, and C to this. And this type of system has a drawback. And I'll tell you what it is. Let's say we have a failure. Let's say one of these coils 
right here breaks and fails. Uh, we are now jeopardizing this coil right here. So this coil is not going to last very long because we're basically uh, putting double the uh, uh, current through it because this coil has to support A and C. Um, so if, if, you if you do have a failure, they're kind of like Christmas lights. If you have a failure, uh, when one goes out, the rest aren't far behind. Okay, so that's, that's a delta. I'm going to move you over. Or no, that's a star or a Y, I'm sorry. Now we're going to draw a delta. And this is a little different. And we can draw this one the, pretty much the same way. We're going to go A, B, and C. So we've got our three phases there. But now instead of bringing them together in this Y pattern, now we're going to go from A, and we can run single element or dual element, doesn't matter. We're going to go from phase A to phase B. here. We don't mind my squiggly little element lines. Okay. So that's a delta. I'm going to tip you up just a little bit. This is a delta. This is a Y or also known as a star. So these are the two ways you can wire elements. I mean, let's, let's look at it. What's going to happen if uh, I think a delta is safer, and I'll tell you why. Let's say we break an element here. Say this element fails right here and opens up. It doesn't necessarily go short. We didn't blow a fuse. It just burns in half, and it's not working anymore. Now we're still applying, I mean, there's, we've still got a constant voltage right here. So this voltage remains constant, and this is still firing. This element's still firing. It's not over-firing, because we're phase-to-phase -phase here. We're not fa we're not relying on one element to support another element. And let's say we break an element here. We're still phase to phase. This other element can still fire and not over fire. Uh, we are going to have reduced heat capability, absolutely. But we don't cause other elements to fail. So if I have my choice between delta and y, I always choose delta if it's, if it's an option. So uh, I just thought it would be fun to... Uh, show you the two different types of arrangements and hope you understand it maybe a little better than you did before. And I appreciate you watching.